My guest today is Adam Pisk. As a co-founder at a rapidly evolving remote-only outsourcing enterprise, Adam is dedicated to delivering unparalleled value to the Bruntwork clientele. With an extensive 25-year trajectory in sales and operations leadership, he excels in significantly reducing operational costs and establishing a solid foundation for scalable growth. By transitioning operations to cost-effective regions like the Philippines, Adam unlocks substantial cost savings for their clients. Through tailored strategies, he ensures his clients are primed for scalable success, making meaningful impacts in their respective markets. Thanks so much for joining me today, Adam. So, Adam, uh, outsourcing, huge topic, and um, probably a little confusing to, or a little... Uh, what I hear from small business owners is it makes them feel a little vulnerable. So will you talk with us about why you think outsourcing, especially with a global workforce, because, you, you know, I, I think that brings so many opportunities. And I've been to your website and I've seen the variety of things that people can outsource. Will you talk to us about um uh, you know, why you think this is such a valuable thing for businesses to be doing these days? Yeah, sure. And thanks for having me, Diane. But th there's a saying that I've heard quite a lot in the last couple of months when talking about AI. And a lot of experts have come on and they've said, don't worry about AI taking your job. Worry about someone that knows AI taking your job is what they is what a lot of people say. Ew. And I would extend that to say that someone, a small business that outsources and utilizes AI is going to be the real powerhouse in the next couple of years. So they're scaling not only AI technology for efficiency, but outsourcing in terms of the greatest talent at the lowest cost. And what I've seen for small businesses and we have lots of them that have gone now from small to large. And the secret source is utilizing the right technology and, util and, and incorporating a global workforce to do it. And if you can measure those, bring those two things together, I've seen, and we have a lot of case studies, hundreds of Google reviews of companies that have gone from small to medium to large in certain cases by harnessing that technology. That is so interesting. It's, and are there certain things that you are finding um, more people are outsourcing than other aspects of their business? Well, there's certain roles that are more popular than others. Okay. But I'll, I'll say holistically, and our, the, the slogan of our company is outsource anything. That's what our slogan is. And look, we do, we, there's a lot of freelancing and task based. That's not what we do. There's sites that specialize in that. But the way that we think about it is whatever type of role you are going to hire locally that doesn't need to be physically present can operate behind a computer, you can find in the global workforce. And so, sure, the, the most popular type of roles are uh, admin assistants and virtual assistants and bookkeeping, but we have roles to engineering, to obviously software development, uh, to architecture, to medical doctors, all operating within the technology of the remote re remote workforce. So it really uh, extends to almost any role that you are looking to hire locally. That is amazing to me. And, and how does a small business owner um, make sure that they're getting the right kind of person, but also that their intellectual property is secure. You know, the things yep. that, that really worry them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I suppose that's one of the, the reasons why we set up in the way that we do. So sites like freelance sites like Upwork and Fiverr, when you can, where you can hire a freelancer, you, you basically put in a task and you have 500 people that apply and you've got to go through and there's reviews, but you've got to go through and then you're engaging directly with someone that you really don't know much about and it's all on you. Our process is, and we recruit for free, so the, the onus is on us. We have a discovery call with a client, try and understand 
what they're trying to achieve. So we help them define the role of the person that they're doing. We try and understand what success would look like. Then we take that and through a whole lot of technology as well and a lot of people in our company, we then match them with candidates that we think would be a good fit. So if it's a sales role, we would send resumes and voice recordings or video recordings. If it's a technical role, it might be a resumes and some of the work that they've done. If it's a marketing role, it might be resume and portfolios. And then we set up interviews with these candidates. And then we sit in on the interviews as well. So we help guide the clients through the entire process. We hold their hands. We've done a lot of outsourcing. We see thousands of people. We know what works and what doesn't. So we we also help the client from making bad decisions. It doesn't help us if we give them a, client, a, a candidate that isn't going to work out. We then just have to replace them for free. Right. So what what I'm trying to say, and I, I, I won't step step by step through our whole process because it'll take a while, but yeah. a small business that hasn't done it before, we hold their hand. And also we, we're, we're there in case it does go wrong. We try and understand why and then replace that candidate with someone better. Um, intellectual property, data security that you've talked about very briefly. And again, that's another rabbit hole I could go down, but the technology has developed so fast now. And so far where, um, for example, we're HIPAA accredited, which is the stand, you know, the standard in the medical sure. field. So yeah. we're HIPAA accredited, um, SOC 2, uh, uh, ISO, um, GDPR, PCI compliance. So in terms of data security, Outsourcing companies know that's their reputation. And so a lot of them, uh, us, we we take it very seriously. We try and build our systems like a Fort Knox. Uh, so generally, a small business is more secure with us than they would be on their own. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. It's so great. Yeah. And, and so one of the things that I love about this is that you are hitting such a pain point for small businesses that that I hear a lot is they're not real good at hiring. Right. Because yeah. they, they hire, they they don't necessarily, you said something that was so great, which was, you know, what does success look like? You know, you find mm-hmm. out from the business, what does success look like, look like? And then that helps you find candidates. A lot of small business owners really don't know how to hire effectively. So you know, having you doing that for them, it, it can be a game changer. Yeah. And look, for a lot of small businesses, it, they're hardly hiring at all locally, let alone hiring someone from the yeah, other side of the world. True. Right. right. So mm-hmm. we we take that fear and intimidation. We bring our experience into the into the whole process, and we don't charge for it. I said that that's only it's only we incorporate it in into the rate only if they decide to move ahead with someone. And then again, um, all our agents are on a ninety day probationary period. So if it doesn't work. We terminate people, understand what went wrong, replace with someone better. Uh, and our whole agreements are month by month. So the risk level we wow. try and make really low. And we know we do it like that. And we take all the costs on the front end because we know this works. We just know it works. Yeah. We've just seen it too many times. So there's a formula. And, uh, you know, if we've got businesses that really want to scale and they really want the, it will work. So we take the risk on the front end and hold their hand through it. And and you just made me think of something else, which is that, that it's hard to hire because it's hard to find people. So mm-hmm. how are you finding the people? Are you guys always consistently out there looking for people with skill sets or is it, do you wait until someone needs something and then go find them? How's that working? Look, uh, to, we're at a size where you get a sense of scale and I'll throw some numbers at you just to give you a, a sense of it. Okay. Um, so for example, we have a recruiting team of about a hundred people wow. that are constantly recruiting, screening candidates. We get about 15 to 18,000 candidates applying to us every month, month, right? Of that, we wow. hire about 400 people a month or more every month. So in terms of a process to get the best candidates out there and how do we do it we do it um not only uh we've been in the market for a while but we've got a brand name that if you're in our space and you're looking for work we pay our agents at a premium um we pay above market that attracts people we sure. take the best of the best we deal with clients then that that are serious uh so agents get taken care of 
We provide things like health insurance, which a lot of our competitors do oh, not do. No kidding. And so we we get the best of the best apply and, uh, and then we filter through them. And we have a lot of technology, a lot of AI technology that we've developed uh, to do it at scale. So it's people plus AI really helps you, you, you do that yeah. at scale and do it well. Wow, that is amazing. Um, so, so these are your employees. Yeah, you correct. Well, that correct. So, so it's it's if you're a small business, uh, the staff that you, that are working on for you, they actually work for us technically, but you direct them. You you know they basically yeah. become your staff conceptually, but right. legally they're ours, right. and that's very important from a. US payroll perspective yeah. <laughs> or Canadian or Australian, et cetera, that it remains that way, but that's the way outsourcing works. That's interesting. Okay. So small business owners are listening. It, it, it's, you know, the, the audience for this podcast, if you were going to give them um, one or two uh, pieces of advice, like they're listening and they're going, wow, this sounds really interesting. Still a little nervous, but thinking I got to do something, I'm, it's hard to hire, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. What are, what are like some initial steps that you would recommend someone take to learn more about this, to get a comfort level with it? You know, do they start oh. small with just like one person or what do you think? Yeah, I, I look, we have people that come to us and say, oh, this is going to be great. I want a team of 10 and they've never done it before or 20. Um, and we push back on that. And the reason why we push back on that is you've got to learn how to manage remotely. It is different to having someone in a room and you've got to learn to do it. And my view is it's better to start small, learn that process. And then also a big part of finding the right person for a small business is for us to understand not just the skill sets they need, but the culture and how they manage. Because it doesn't help to have someone who, or if you're in a certain industry, it helps to find an agent or someone that is interested in that. So once we learn more about your business, it's easier for us to hire better for the client as well. So the, the best way to start is find a role that uh, is easily defined and that you have done or something has been done before in the company. So there's an existing process. That's the, that's the best way to start in a role where there's an existing process, it, because then you know you've trained someone on that before, someone's done that role, you know what defines success in it. And so it's easier to put someone from another country in that and, and understand whether and, and work to a successful outcome. If you try and make up a role uh, mm -hmm. or something that you haven't done before, or you're not sure yourself how to do it, that's more challenging. And that often would lead to, to failure in that sense. Yeah. So you know, the other thing that's important to remember with outsourcing is a lot of people will come to us and they go, I have all these things to do and I need someone to do my marketing, my outbound sales and my bookkeeping. And uh, I also need them to, you know, to build my website and to do my email marketing. And if you think about one person having the skills to do that, that just doesn't exist. Outbound sales to marketing, it's not, you wouldn't find that locally right. to find someone say, I want someone to be an expert. And all. So people, a lot of small businesses, because if you're a small business owner, you need to be an expert in a lot of things. Right. You're the entrepreneur. <laughs> but if you find someone else is an expert in all those things, they're probably an entrepreneur. They're probably not an, <laughs> an admin assistant or a sales right. agent. So it's like you're hiring locally that you're hiring a specific role and job description that is standard. I mean, I need a salesperson. I need a, a marketing assistant. I need a web developer. I need a bookkeeper. And you, you've got to be careful not to mix too many of those skills in the same person. Otherwise, you get mediocrity in terms of what the outcome is. So that's, that's just one other thing that I would say. Yeah, no kidding. And so um, if they if they have a function, but they do not have some sort of process or procedure. I mean, it's like in their head, but it's yeah. not written down anywhere. Um, should they take the time to get that nailed down and figure it out before they decide yeah. to outsource? Yeah, I I, I do. I, and and we, I'd have conversations where people are really wanting to move ahead. They see the value on it, but because they haven't done that process, 
and we recruit for free, I know it's going to fail. Yeah, right. Because you, you'd you have a, a staff member start on day one and go, okay, tell me what to do. And then <laughs> what do I, okay, now I've got someone. And the problem is for small businesses, like our average rates are between 4 to $8 an hour, right? Our average rate for an, for an agent is about, through our company is about $6.60 as an average, right? Wow. So that's from anything high end to low end. That's a that's the average. We do have higher, we do have lower, but that's a rate range for 90% of our roles. Yeah. And so, but for a small business, if you haven't really defined the job description and the process and what success is, that money adds up if you haven't got that person working yeah. successfully. Right. You turn up every morning and go, okay, well, what's Joe going to do today? I'm not exactly sure. And the other thing is Joe, your agent, his staff member, gets nervous because they know this small business owner is going to realize that he's going to get a bill at the end of the, or she at the end of the month and go, what have I been doing? And then yeah. they get nervous. Right. So it is important to have these things defined. It is important. I, I, it's so great. I am. I'm loving this conversation because. It, it, you're you're showing it from every aspect of you know what does success look like and we keep coming back to that if it's going to be a yeah. successful relationship then the small business owner has responsibilities in this process to make sure that they're setting someone up for success you, you know no matter who that person is i want to ask you one last question which is about managing because you mentioned this before about managing a remote team that it's different than mm. than having people in your office um I excuse me. I know it's challenging, but are there like just maybe quick tips that you would give someone about things that they should be thinking about or doing to make sure there's that connectivity? Yeah, I look. It's challenging if you haven't done it before, but mm -hmm. I think once you've done it, it's actually a lot easier than managing someone in the office. You've got them walking over to you. You've got them disturbing you. They're eating on the side. They're you know, you talk about collaboration, but maybe I'm in focused work and I don't want to hear them on the phone. So there's there's pros and cons in both. It is challenging if you haven't done it before. But the, the way to think about it is that just because you've got someone sitting on the other side of the world, they're generally working in your time zone in the same okay. hours that you are, right? So it's not that we do, okay, you're in the US and they're working in the middle of the night. We operate, our team operates in your time zone. Okay. Uh, no matter where they are, whether in South America or Asia or uh, Africa or wherever our staff are located, mm -hmm. the um the the thing about it is from 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 a high level, is that the staff member wherever they are needs to feel part of the company in in when you manage them. If they if you say oh this is the outsourced person, they're not part of us. It's us and the people in the office and it's just them yeah. and there's some outsourced brunt work person. Yeah. Um, that it makes it more challenging because they don't feel that they're part of the DNA of your company. So we need them. And we have a test after every month, after every month we ask our, our staff member, who do you work for? And if they answer brunt work, mm. we failed. Ah. Right? If they answer the, the small business name or the medium business, or whatever business yeah. we've, they, we've succeeded because they've incorporated them as part of their business. And so there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of, uh, and I have a lot of strategies in terms of managing teams, which I actually just utilized when I had the in-office as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that though, particularly with remote teams is a lot of people try and they, they get caught into micromanaging. <laughs> and I think that's a real mistake, whether it's in-office or, or remote. But yeah. in, in a remote environment, people often think, oh, I don't know what they're doing. I can't see them. Therefore, I better check all the time what they're doing. Yeah. And people don't, people need to operate. I'm an expert in what I do. You paying me to what I do. Trust me right. to get the job done. Okay. If I mess up, I, I get a level that you might need to coach me or, or manage me a little right. bit more, but give me the, so I manage my team uh, and, and I recommend for our clients to do as well, much more based on output then what are you doing at 12.07? Yes. Right. Why would you at your desk? So give them a, a list of daily, weekly tasks, objectives, KPIs, manage them to that. And that's usually the way to, to do it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad I asked that question. I love that answer. It's so <laughs> true. So thank you so much, Adam, for spending this time with me. Will you tell the listeners how they can find you and sure. work and-, and Sure. Work? 
Thanks. Sure. So uh, our website is bruntwork.co, bruntwork.co. Uh, and you can find me on LinkedIn under Adam Pisk. I'm there. P-I-S-K is my last name. You're free to email me directly uh, to your listeners, adam at bruntwork.co. Happy to have uh, a chat with you personally. Uh, if I'm not awake, depending on what time it is, I've got a great <laughs> US, UK, we're a global business. We have a 24-hour team, but I would respond to you personally and happy to have a chat and see whether we're right for you. And 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 I'd, I'd ask you listeners, check out our case studies, check out our reviews. We have hundreds of companies that we've helped on our Google reviews, hundreds of staff members of ours that have left Glassdoor reviews. So if you if you need more confidence about it, feel free to check out that as well. Oh my gosh, so great. Thank you so much, as I said, for, for spending this time with us. And listeners, thank you. You are who we're doing this for.